This is the Reflector Reflections podcast. My name is Annie. Join me as we journey around the world talking with fellow reflectors as they experiment and navigate their unique design. Today's beautiful conversation is with Amber Clements. Besides being a 1-3 reflector, Amber is an international author, notably her book on reflectors, The Barometers of the World. Amber is also a fully qualified human design analyst, a quantum level four design specialist and quantum alignment practitioner who has presented for the past two years at the International Human Design Conference hosted by Karen Curry Parker. Look, Amber, welcome. I could go on about what you do or are doing or have done, but you run your own business, change your way, you're offering all sorts of beautiful services. Thank you so very much, you busy, busy woman, for uh, taking time to talk with me today. Oh, not at all. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me, Annie. <laughs> so um, as a part of this podcast, Amber, we're really just getting to the nuts and bolts of why, like the whys and the hows of finding out that you're a human design reflector or even an introduction into human design. So can you talk to me a little bit about your introduction to human design? I know you go into this in your book. Um, so for those people who want to read Amber's book, she does go into it, but I'm going to get a little bit more juicy. Sure, sure. Um, gosh, for me, I um, the actual point of me when I first discovered my design, a friend of mine had said, oh, let me run your chart. And I didn't know what she was talking about. And I kind of you know, brushed it over and um, she sent me an email with some details and I didn't, I sort of passed it over a couple of times before I actually sat down and had a look at the, at the, at the details in the chart. And honestly, time stood still at that moment. As I'm reading these details about what it means, you know, um, to be a reflector, I, my, my jaw dropped, I was in tears, I was kind of, it, it almost felt like for the first time there must have been someone in that room <laughs> who had spied on me my whole life and put it into a document for me to um, for me to read and, and sort of, you know, who's, who, who's doing this? It kind of really didn't, it felt surreal, basically. Wow. So, I... yeah, you can, you can, <laughs> you had the same sort of experience. I did. Um, I think it's because we we are often so misunderstood, even for ourselves, um, and we're so different and there's so few people who are like us that to actually feel like someone, in this case, it was a document with information on it, really got me or got uh, got how, you know, how we work. For me, it was just a revelation. It was that it was the opening of um, what became, you know, an, an obsession at one point to just understand, just to learn more. And I know that there's similar stories for other reflectors about, you know, what is this stuff? What is this thing? Um, so, um, yeah, so I kind of, you know, it took a little while to, to really spend time getting into it before I then decided to go and study more around it and learn more about it. Um, yeah. So how many years ago was this roughly for you when you first found it? About four years ago. Wow. Um, yeah, and I, um, the, the, the interesting thing for me, some of the things that I had been learned, I learned eventually about human design, I had already been doing in my life um, because of, I think, just the nature of some of my um, my own chart. I kind of learned these some of these things and were already implementing, but I just didn't understand how or why they were so you know, aligned with how I needed to work. So um, I very much deep dived in, long story short, I walked off a job um, having worked corporate, you know, hardcore, running teams, busy, you know, thinking I would, this was so important and, and but going to work every day, thinking it was Groundhog Day, wondering what the hell I was doing. Yeah. Um, and so when I stepped out of that and just went, I can't do this anymore, um, I that's when I deep dived into my my study and my journey um, of studying human design and really getting down into the nitty gritty and um, I'd already I'd studied lots in my life I've, you know a number of degrees and things so for me like to study something is really in my in my nature um, but this I just I just as as I think most of us do when we we learn about it if it resonates for us we kind of get right into it we want to get all the details. So I, I studied it and I, I took my time before I actually started using it with other people because, again, for me, it was really about feeling into it and feeling comfortable. And I'm not someone, I'm very cautious in my chances as well. I'm cautious to jump in and, you know, I never wanted to go out and say I was 
human design, you know, analyst to be able to help people before I really, 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 truly got it and embodied it and felt it within me. So I studied for quite a while and and took my time before I started then having the confidence and and I guess this what I felt was the skills to be able to then help other people understand their charts. Yeah. And then write a book about it. <laughs> and then you yes, exactly and a beautiful book indeed. Um and so finding out that your profile was that one three and it kind of makes yeah. sense, doesn't it? That oh, the study, the right. you're making sure that you've got everything, you've just just the deep dive would have been deep. My, I've got a one, but mine's obviously unconscious, but I feel that even though that, that, that deep dive, but I could imagine for a, for yourself, it would have been a huge, huge. Record. Yeah, it was, it was getting into it. And, and I think that the thing is for me as well, with that threes, I'd spent most of my life trialing things out you know being the the experimenter as such and having having bumped into life often the hard way um, and learning about myself as a as a um, reflector and I think I guess in hindsight I always sensed it was a blessing but at the time I I probably wouldn't have said this that I mean I didn't I didn't get married until I was in my early 40s I um I did, I've done a lot of things in my life. Like I sometimes look back and go, oh my goodness me, I would never tell a reflector to go and do all those things. But I did a lot. But for me, it was like that feeling, that trial and error of everything kind of really taught me some of the things I then learned was completely natural and the way that's best serves us as reflectors. So I'm kind of grateful I had the three in there early on in life. Um, and the one has been able to allow me to go deep, you know, like we, we do with that number one of, of really understanding things and things that we're passionate about anyway, you know, that we want to study into. I loved reading about your life in the book because <laughs> the amount of things that you've done, I just go, whoa, wow. Um, and if that's not a true testament to how a reflector can just like literally like slide in and out of everywhere and... <laughs> I'm just like, there's nothing. That's, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> but it also led to, in your book, you, you talk about the health issues that you had and mm -hmm. that burnout because mm -hmm. living in that conditioned world, I suppose. So can we talk a little bit about that, how that was for you? Yeah, yeah sure. Look, for me, when I was, tra like I travelled a lot. So I've, I used to travel a lot, often travel on my own and I'd meet people and have time with people and alone. That stuff was great. That did not burn me out. Like I could have continued to do that and probably maybe should have in some respects. Where I found I became overwhelmed by other people was when I started to feel like I wanted, to, I was tuning into their desires about or, or their thoughts about what life should be so you know I, I had had this lovely kind of colorful career of you know I was, I was an actress for a while and I was a teacher and I was a travel to a leader and I was all sorts of things and then coming into a place where I was like oh no I want to wear a suit and I want to earn really good money and I want to be you know I want to be the top of my game I want to show people how it's you know kind of buying into that and buying into what at some point was that financial status part that I think the environment that I'd been in for a little while had had kind of conditioned me to feel like I needed that's when I started to burn out it's when I started to honestly when I went in to have a, like a job that was more of that you know normalized 40 hours a week often sitting at a desk in front of a computer with all of the technology around me kind of probably zapping my energy as well um, and and trying to keep up and and being able and conscious of of knowing what it is that I could do you know having the knowledge around things but then like pushing the energy to try and push through because you want it you don't want to be seen as someone that's you know flaky or that needs more rest so I think it's that it's that combination of pushing through and and, and holding on to those ideals that you have learned are the things that you should be doing which in fact really don't serve us at all as reflectors um and that's that's what burnt me out. It's that continual go and not realizing that actually we're here to be, not to do. You know, we're yes. really here to just be in the moment. And I had done that for a lot of my life. Where that's why I flowed like this work. This is great, and this is where I'm going. And and I always got opportunities that would come to me, and I would just go on that journey. But the moment I started to try and be something, 
you know, oh, oh, sorry, so try and do something, I, I lost my sense of being. And that's the that's really where it went downhill. <laughs> I really love that because it's so it's that's so true. Um, we try to be doers in a world of just we should be being, and it's that's the conditioning, isn't it? That's societal conditioning where we just always feel like there's something wrong with us. Why can't I do, do, do? Um, I hear that so much. I've felt that. I see it playing out with other people that I'm meeting in reflectors and yep. even some of our beautiful projector friends who kind of, they feel that too. It's mm. it's really hard to stop being a doer. It's really hard oh, to just go, well, I'm just, I'm supposed to be because you still think, be what? Be what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, I know in my practice, that's probably one of the biggest things I hear people trying to work on, um, particularly the non-generated, that so that, you know, the non-sacrals, because we're so often trying to keep up with them and, and we don't have that sustainable energy and, and, and therefore we start burning out and then we're too burnt out to then allow ourselves to have extra time to start being. And so it's kind of this compounding piece of, um, and, and, we me we mentally get stuck up in the mind around holding on to those ideas of what we should be, and therefore we don't allow ourselves to be like. I took some time out um, last week. I went to a cabin where there was no internet, there was no connectivity, and just to give myself a break. And I forgot how amazingly empowering that is for us, and how we need to be doing that more. Right. Um, uh, you know, it, it just getting caught up in in so many things around us if we don't give ourselves that opportunity to just just to pull back and be present. Like I watched I watched birds last week. I, I was listening to all of the different um, birds communicating and I really felt like connected into them because that's all I was doing. I was just sitting in this cottage looking at these beautiful animals that are around me and feeling alive feeling really alive and I you know it's just we, we I think we forget we, we're not we're not taught to do that enough I don't think you know it's I guess it's not our it's not part of the way that we're brought into the world to be you know no it's not and, and, and taking that time to actually get out of that head and feel we all of a mm. sudden can feel this feels really good and then the mm. head kicks back in it goes no but you've got to be doing like you, I, I recently went away and I took myself away from everybody for four days and it was the most incredible experience I've had. I, I was really? just, I, I've come home and gone, I need to do this more often and not feel yes. one iota of guilt about it. Just going, this is what I need in my life mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. be me. So, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think if we don't, I, and we need that. We, we're better for other people. Like we're a better barometer of, of helping others in that way if we have time to charge ourselves. So I'm, I'm, I love that you were saying that, you know, you did it without feeling guilty because you shouldn't do Because really, ultimately, you're going to have more to be present in when you have that time to yourself for others, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely, it does. So when you, um, just stepping back into four to five past your past life four to five years ago mm -hmm. past self I should say and you found out and you went through those myriad of emotions that mm -hmm. brand new person Amber who says oh my gosh this is me what was the first thing that you did obviously you went down your rabbit hole mm -hmm. but what was one of the first things that you possibly implemented in all of this learning that's, good. that's a good question um Okay, I'm going to be really honest. The very first thing that I read that I implemented, it said in this report that I found or that, that was sent to me that, reflect, and I don't know whether this is for, if, if all reflectors feel this way, but it said this and it really resonated. It said, reflectors don't like doing menial tasks, menial repetitive tasks. We prefer to conserve our energy for things that are, you know, that, that allow us to be more useful in the world in, in whatever way that might mean. And all I remember is thinking, I knew that for me, the doing housework, it's not that I hate doing housework. I like to keep things clean, but there was something about the monotony of those tasks that are the same every day that just felt like it was really <laughs> just drew all my energy so I was able to negotiate let's just say um, <laughs> at the time um, with my partner to um, take on a few more of those tasks because this is what I realized is that I was always there emotionally supportive 
encouraging and giving back, reflecting and helping people in my life. That's what I, that's as a reflector, that's what my part of, you know, our gifts is, and that, that's what I was doing. So I, instead of thinking, oh, I'm asked that this person is now doing maybe a few more of the boring chores, I actually kind of felt less guilty about it because I was actually always there supporting in a different way. It's just that the way that I was giving might not be as physical. Um, and they were quite happy to just, you know, do the dishes a few more times or do those things that, you know, it's not such a big deal where for me, it felt draining. Like, how am I going to, how can I be creative and write this thing and these things that I'm feeling flowing into, if I've now got to stop and vacuum the house for an hour and, and spend, you know, my day doing those menial things. Um, so that was probably the first thing. Um, and again, it's a bit, it's, it's a little bit silly, but. Um, no, I love that you did that because that makes so much sense for me as that was something that I've learned from you to just say, oh, um, I'm having a creative moment right now. Can you, you being the generator partner, can you please deal with that? And having that, having that yeah. openness with your family to be able to say, look, I'm having a moment. I'm having a creative. Yeah. I can't, I can't stop. I'm going. Yeah. And then they go, yep, sure. I've got it. I'm going to, I'm going to run with oh, this. It is so good. So nice. It's so nice to feel supported as well and, and be around people. Honestly, I find one of the most challenging things is to communicate our needs to people without them thinking and judging us that we're lazy or that we are, um, that, you know, oh, so, you know, you can't come and do this thing in the middle of the night. Everybody else can do it. I'm like, I need my sleep. And it's not that I'm being whingy and I will work hard or I need to, but I need, you know, it's like honouring the things that we need and not always having people that understand us. But when we've got people in our lives who are supportive, it means, oh gosh, I don't know, so much, I find. It, it really it really does. And yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. I hear a lot of that. It's um, we're, we're deemed as lazy, um, wishy-washy. <laughs> I know I use that word a lot. I use wishy-washy and I, I mean uh -huh. it in a loving way of just being, yeah. being okay with this whole fluidity of just flowing in and out of life. Because mm -hmm. it's like, well, that's who I am. I'm Yep. Um, I'm yep. fluid. <laughs> I'm moving. So when you found out that obviously with human design, you found out you're a reflector, um, did you obviously start doing your partner's chart and did they kind of come on board with you into this whole deep dive? I'm trying, I think it, it took me a little bit of time. I, I spent a little bit of time just understanding myself and you know being that one three I also wanted to understand the system I, you know it was okay this is all good this is wonderful about myself but what is it what is this thing what is this human design system so I think I, I did a little bit more exploratory around that first and then I did run the charts of the people in my life that I, I wanted to kind of get a bit more of a, an understanding about. And that was brilliant because that's when the conversations could start around, okay, I argue with you a lot and it's really frustrating me. And, you know, why are we doing this? Oh, okay, we've both got an open throat. We both don't feel heard. We both, or, you know, um, you've got a defined emotional centre. Mine's open. Right, you get grumpy. I pick up your grumpy. I reflect it back. We, you know, so now I just go, okay, grumpy's here. I'm now going to just, I say that in an yes. endearing way because we make jokes, but I, I'm now going to take myself somewhere else into a different room or outside so that I can um, not pick up on the grumpy myself or certainly allow myself to just let, let you know, whoever's going through their stuff process it without it, you know, without this mirroring and this kind of this feedback and amplification. Oh, I love that. That's so good. So as a part of this experiment that you went through, obviously, you know, the, the textbooks say this, and when you yeah. first do your chart, you get a report. And a lot of the, the common theme is track the lunar cycle, sleep separately from your partner. Did you do any of that? Um, honestly, in the beginning, no. Um, I didn't sleep. I, I did my... So put it this way, I've always been a very, very light sleeper. I also have gate 19 and I, I see in my practice with a lot of people who have this combination that it can make you even more sensitive. So I had not been sleeping well next to my partner for a while who feels like when they're asleep as a generator, there's like a train engine motor going on, even though there's no snoring, it's this, you know. And so for me, um, 
it, it, it sort of almost gave me permission to go, you know what, I need two nights a week, I need to sleep separately, I need to have my space. And then I started working out how well that made me feel, and actually how better he felt, because he wasn't worrying about waking me up. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, that that sleeping, I, look, I've slept, I've had um, a, relationships in my life where I've slept next to people who I didn't have a problem sleeping next to um, and I feel like it's it depends on who you're next to but for me this helped solve my sleep issues and sleep is so important as as you know as a reflector that I needed to honor that and that, that was a really good decision for me um, with the, the, the lunar cycle I I, I didn't understand it at first because it's there's not a lot of great information out there about how to do it and it wasn't until I really, really understood it and then developed my own way of tracking it, of way of capturing it that I do now that helped me really understand what the tracking is about and how you, you track that. And what I was noticing before I started tracking was that I would have almost like regularly, occasionally a day, like a day that would, I just couldn't do anything. I just felt like all I wanted to do was sit on the couch and watch Netflix or just lie around and do not like I felt really heavy and and I noticed there'd be certain days where I'd have these similar themes and so it wasn't until I then eventually went through and tracked it that I realized it's when I have those transit connections in my chart that I've got that you know and that is what's happening and so as as we are so like really we're here to be conditioned by the planets that's our our role it's not even to be conditioned by others so so we deep, so deeply feel those connections. And, you know, instead of me going, what's wrong with me? I obviously need more vitamin B or maybe I'm doing this too much. Or, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at all of these external things to fix me. I actually go, okay, right. Well, now, you know, there's stuff going on. It's impacting me. I need to honour it. I need to go, you know, to be in the flow of that again and just honour my need to take it easy today. Because usually the next day, I'm fine. Yeah. And so for me, when I did start to track the, the transits, that's when it was almost like permission giving around understanding why, what was going on a little bit more. And my my one profile like to understand it um, so that I could be a little bit more permission giving to myself around um, how I felt and not not so judgmental around what I was, you know, why I might have been feeling up or down at a particular time. Yeah, that's so good. Um coming in as a newish newish human design reflector myself you know the first thing that we're we're thrown at is you must track your lunar cycle but nobody tells you how to do that so you're up here and I've always loved looking at the moon anyway and I love tracking that but you're up yeah. here going okay full moon new moon uh waning waxing and you're like what am I supposed to be feeling? Until you realise that it's not tracking the actual moon, it's tracking the transits, the planetary yes. transits. So Absolutely. I don't know if that information really goes out to the new the new reflectors. They they go, oh, I'm tracking the moon. What am I looking yeah. for? Uh, instead yeah. of it, it's saying, well, actually, you you're supposed you should be tracking the transits because you, you do you do find a little bit of a theme happening when you start to get into it. I think that was that was the the biggest illumination in in my experiment today is just going oh oh I see yeah, this trend absolutely happening. yeah yeah absolutely so Amber you you've again I know that you've mentioned a lot of this in the book so I won't go too deep into it because people have to buy it and read it themselves but um your family you know looking back um when we find this out about ourselves as obviously conditioned beings and we look back to our family and we're like oh that makes so much sense mm -hmm. your parents mm -hmm. and and your upbringing and stuff like that would you like to share anything about your upbringing and how you can kind of look back with that aha uh -huh, makes sense yeah sure look i i think i was really lucky as a reflector in my upbringing because i grew up with my father was a generator who had is with um eight centers defined so very consistent luckily consistent and a good man so consistently a good man um and my mother was a manifester, or is it, they're both still alive, so I shouldn't talk in, in past tense, should I? <laughs> um, and my mother is a manifester. And so, and my, grand, my grandparents lived with us, and my grandfather was also a manifester, and my grandmother was a, a generator. Um, and so, 
Um, growing up with parents or with a very big support net network who I had consistency with, but then I had people who were really great at initiating me and giving me the space and the creative um, um, the creative ability to, to get out there and encourage me to, to, to be more in the flow and to not follow the normal path, I feel for me was really advantageous for my upbringing because I was able to be quite dynamic in the way that I did things and I was always encouraged and I was always told, you know, follow your flow um, rather than having to work among, um, I guess, probably what felt would have felt more like a generator's conditioning world had I not been in you know had I not been around um, two particularly um, powerful manifestors and my mother is incredibly powerful mm -hmm. she creates pretty much whatever she needs and so that has been really good for me because she would initiate me into things and that and, and if that felt the flow you know if I felt that was the right thing and gave it time then I would actually they, they would lead to some some quite beneficial um, outcomes so I think you know as a reflector I, I, look, I, I won't lie. I um, my parents didn't like they they separated when I was seventeen, and so when they were young, particularly when I was younger, they didn't have the best marriage. I mean, they were they were both great people. It's just they weren't well suited, right? So they'd have these disagreements and things, but it would come out through me, and I'd be the problem child. You know, I was the hyperactive. I was the naughty child, and it was really just me often reflecting all of that stuff as we do, you know, picking that up. And so that part of it, um, you know, I look back and I, people would say, oh, you, as a young child, you were so naughty, you were so, um, and, and, <laughs> and I probably was, but at least I understand as to what was going on now. Um, and so there's, there's that part of it, I think, when you've, you know, you're around whatever you're reflecting isn't necessarily, you know, hopefully it's happy and, and reasonably healthy, but um, when it's not, that's obviously going to have some um, effect on us. Mm. Um, but I was lucky. I also have a, I have a projector brother and I have a generator sister who's nearly all defined. So it's, it's interesting that the very different, the almost completely open projector brother and the very open manifesting mother and grandfather and then the generators who were very defined so I look I, I feel lucky in in what I yeah that's I chose or what I had <laughs> yeah that's an interesting family dynamic do you feel that you know I've just forgotten the question I was going to ask that just completely went out of my head anyway it doesn't matter it'll come back oh sorry I was going to say that with us we've got a lot of conditioning and with Again, when you're a new person and you're learning about human design, they all talk about this de deconditioning process. And I guess for us, finding human design in our late 30s, early 40s, we got a we got a lot of shit behind us to kind of go through. And it's really, I found for myself, one of the parts of deconditioning is just acceptance. And I think human design allowed has allowed me to just go, oh, I understand now. Do you find that as well, that when you look back, even though there's the deconditioning, you can just, it's just acceptance. It's just going, I, I understand me a little bit more now. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what I'm going to say on that is, and it's something I actually just did a, um, a, a video on somewhere. I can't remember. It's something. Um, technically, we're not here to be conditioned by other people. Right. So, you know, Ra always talks about we're here. This is why we've got this Teflon aura. We are obviously we off, we pick up everybody's stuff, but we're actually here just we're supposed to just be sampling it. Right. Just a taste. You know, we don't we just need a mouthful of the, the chocolate cake to work out whether it's a good chocolate cake or not. Right. So that that's essentially what we're here to do in the conditioning thing. And so we can get clogged up right, which, you know, you look back and go, oh, gosh, what was I doing? And all of that stuff that I was clogging myself up in. But what's beautiful about us, and this is what I really notice so much so when I work with um, project, pro projectors, reflectors versus all the other types, is we have the ability to decondition, if I even want to call it that, yeah. far easier than the other types. Because actually we're not designed to hold on mm -hmm. to that stuff right we've got the the ability to, to 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 protect ourselves and let it slip off us and once we and I think honestly sometimes it's just that realization or that understanding 
Um, and I've worked with um, reflectors and I know for myself, I had some pretty yucky stuff happen to me in some points in my life, but I was able to go to almost like, oh, okay, that happened and that kind of affected me in that way. But it didn't become me as it did to other people that I know had a similar um, things that happened to them. Mm. And so I feel like for us, our tr like it's allowing us, once we know that, once we kind of go, oh, okay, you know, like you were saying, look back and go, oh, that's what happened. That's why. I think it's that understanding of, okay, that's why I was, that's why I, things happened in that way. But now when we get to a certain point, it's like, well, I've got a choice now. I can, I know I can flip up my little um, resistant, like I cannot let things get into me. It doesn't mean it doesn't always happen. Certainly, of course, we have moments, but we've got the ability to let it go much quicker than, than others. Um, it's the, it's, and this is why the, the, tr the transits are so important because not, and not just the lunar transits, all of the planetary transits is because we cannot protect ourselves from them. They are the things that really condition us the most. Um, and I think that's where we're, we're so lucky because otherwise we, you know, think about it as a reflector with nine open centers, why are we not complete Rex, <laughs> and, and you know, right? Well, why are we not? Because we're so open, according to you know the, what, what we hear about conditioning. But most most reflectors I've met, and this is I'm by no means putting everybody in the same, because you know we're all different. But I've met a lot, and most of them are quite dynamic, um, resilient um, individuals. And and I think that's that natural part of us that even if we didn't realize we had it there is that ability and I think it's only when we've had a lot a lot of stuff happen maybe when we're young that has just been overwhelming when maybe that that can have a bigger impact on how we are able to unload when we get older I don't know does that make it uh, does that that's actually so well explained because there is that feeling of just and I'm only speaking for myself obviously but just when you look back you're like oh that explains that and it doesn't mm. it doesn't kind of stick even though we've all sort of still yep. got issues that have happened and and hurts and wounds and and things like that it's just like there is a level of just going being able to yeah just yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah absolutely and I think inherently yeah. we know that and that's the beauty yeah. of it when we find mm -hmm. this out when you find human design I think it just really it just allows for acceptance it allows you mm -hmm. to actually drop into yourself and go oh this is who I am yeah um, yep. I think that's a beautiful thing and that's one of the best things that I've found about it and the more I speak to people <laughs> about it they just go oh you know it's amazing you yep. can just go oh this is just something else that I'm learning about myself yep yep oh, absolutely. wonderful so Speaking about that, and this has been a wealth of knowledge, and I could I could keep talking to you for hours because you do have such well a wealth of knowledge. Thank you. Best advice for a new reflector? Um, I'm finding, and you were mentioning it before, that you know this is a this you know the hive mind is starting to speak. We're sort of coming out mm -hmm. of the woodwork a lot, and it's mm -hmm. it's a beautiful time. So for new reflectors, what's some of the best advice that you could give to them? I I would probably say it's it's really it's time to stop overthinking things it's time to stop getting stuck up in, and I know a lot of new reflectors like we all want to explore and understand and that there's nothing wrong with that but often it's like well I'm a reflector does this mean this and and does this and and so we get this we kind of get stuck up in their heads and really it's it kind of coming back to what we sort of said at the beginning we're here to be not do we are here to be present. The more present we are in the moment, the more we can pick up what's going on, both in the planets and sense when other people are aligned and not aligned and, and, and what they, you know, where they're at and be useful yeah. in that role. Um, and so the more we get caught up in either doing or thinking, and, you know, really, I, I feel like that's just when we kind of undo ourselves and we send ourselves into a spiral. And so by going with the flow, by allowing yourself, like for me, the best, one of the best things I've found, and, and I know we can't all do this, and certainly my experience has been younger, the reflector is, the more we're still borrowing other people's energy and kind of acting more dynamically maybe than, than even the generators around us. But as we get older, that we, we don't have that same ability, unfortunately. It's sort of, and, and so we, we're forced to really go, okay, I really need to be and not do now. Um, so that's a benefit. 
But, um, <laughs> I, you know, like that's one of the pros I get. But what I wanted to say is, is, is stop resisting life. And, and, and when you can, if you can wake up and go, okay, I'm just going to see where the day takes me. And yes, this week I've got to do X, Y, and Z, but I'm going to see how I feel. And like, hopefully by the end of the week, I get X, Y, and Z done, but I do it on the time that feels right rather than kind of trying to overly push yourself into doing when you feel or think or, you know, there's this other internal um, mental um, push on what you should be doing. Yeah. You, you can just be more present. And I think even if it's, if you're in a new reflector and you're absolutely flat out because you're in a world that that's what is required of you, you can't just jump out of it at the moment, get out, I don't know, on a weekend and go and just stand in nature, go and sit on a beach, walk through a, a, you know, a forest, sit on the grass, stare at the sky. I'm pretty sure I saw a photo of you the other day lying somewhere beautiful with a, what was it, a, a, a some sort of animal? It was a, a goat. goat. A goat. I mean, hang out with a goat. <laughs> How am I, like, seriously, I, like, I hung out with cows last week. I literally, I'm sure I had a conversation with this cow. We had a stare off and we had a bit of a moo. And, and that's, the, that's the more we do that, I think the more connected to ourselves we get. And so even if it's just small steps in being more than rather than doing, for me, that's, that's the start of really discovering Oh, that, that's where we such are. sage advice that's such sage advice I often worry for you know we when you get a little bit older and and I don't mean any disrespect in saying this but you know when we oh, get no. a little bit older we do start to slow down because you know the, the, the wise old brain starts to kick in and go huh, you're getting a bit older now you can't keep up but you know for a 21 year old who still likes to party and they're reflectors is really good advice for them to just say you don't have to just stop altogether but just honor mm little bits of time for yourself walk barefoot in the grass you know and your lunch break in the corporate city I think that's just really really good advice thank you Amber because yeah, I do worry for the younger generation sometimes mm. in in this crazy world but again this crazy world is starting to slow down mm. maybe absolutely yeah we are <laughs> Maybe. So tell us a little bit more, more um, before we end about what you're doing in your business currently and where people can find you. Sure. Um, so I, um, I have a, a practice where I, I do um, two things. I help people. I do human design readings for people and I do a lot of coaching with it, though. I think, you know, it's great to have a reading, but to understand then how do you use that? Um, so I, I have a coaching practice and and do human design readings. But I also, for me, um, some of the be most beneficial parts of that is, well, what do you do? I know about my chart, I understand it. What do I do with that? So I also have, um, I have a quantum alignment practitioner, which means I use um, subtle energy therapies and um, and EFT, which is tapping, if, you, if you're not sure what that is, anyone. Um, and um, my favorite is I do biofield tuning, which is using tuning forks, but it's all about, therapy to help us decondition or to help us get rid of the stuff that we're holding on to and then what how do we work with the bits in our chart that we want to be able to bring out and go you know I've got this this storytelling element within me how do I how do I nurture that how do I you know what's the best way for me to manifest some of that stuff so that's kind of what I'm where my focus is is just I love working with people and helping them feel like they understand themselves and to be that reflection sometimes for someone and letting people know that, you know, they're beautiful just as they are. And it's about seeing that beauty within their chart so that they can feel like they've got a way to move forward in a, in a direction that feels really supported and correct for them. Um, Oh. So, so my business is um, changeaway.com.au. Um, as you know, I've got a book. I've got another book that's just come out that I've contributed to. Um, and, and yeah, and I'm, I'm on I'm on social media as well. I think Human Design Reflector, uh, among a few other things. Great. Thank you so much, Amber. I just want to, um, to add on to that as well, that um, my experience, I obviously sort of sat with my design for a while and then I reached out and had a professional reading done. And that's been fantastic. I, I still sometimes go back and listen to that three hours of recording. Thank you so much, Kim. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but to have what you just said then is, is amazing um, to have somebody actually go through it and bring out and help you explore these things. Mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is an amazing gift that you're providing the world because that would 
you, you just get caught in it sometimes. You're like, what does this all mean? And you go down that hole of trying to figure it all out. And again, it becomes overwhelming mm. because we don't know it all when we first start. <laughs> so I think, you know, sitting with it and, and finding it and then, you know, seeking somebody out like you that can not, not get into all of the lingo, but just goes, let's look at your design and what this can help you with in your life. Mm. Such a service. Thank you for that. Oh, no worries. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> uh, this has been such a good chat with you and I, I'm so grateful and thankful that you could allow us some time to chat with you. I'm sure there'll be many questions asked going forward. But thank you, oh, Amber. Appreciate your no time. Worries. Thank you and thank you for having me and it's been lovely to meet you too, Annie. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I'd just like to tell everyone I'm seven days older. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when I when I reached out to Amber, we actually figured out we were born seven days apart, so we're like mm. twins, but in different yeah. parts of the world. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you again. No worries at all. Lovely to chat to you.